Hello Libra viewers. Today I'm going to be looking into what your person is feeling, thinking, and what action they might be taking towards you over the next week or two. I feel really drawn to use my Surrender Oracle deck to start out with. So what's a quick message that we need for the Libras that are watching this? Libras that are watching this. There it is. Surrender to the magic of who you are. We all have magic in us, even if the mon and even in the mundane aspects of life. Remember that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that comes just from being you. So if you feel kind of lost lately, it's it's time to get back on track. We have the white horse in the background, so some of you might have horses as your um, spirit animal. Very pure, very loving, very stable animals. Um, very <laughs> did not mean to make that pun. That was an accident. <laughs> but um, yeah, you might have horses as your spirit animal. And what other messages do we have here? For some of you, I almost feel I feel some dark energy around some of you. I feel like some of you really need to be careful about um, shielding and grounding yourself. Um, you might want to really do some clearing work at this time. I just kind of feel like almost like a manipulative energy around you. You know, this could be in the astral realm. This could also just be people's influence, but I just kind of sense like this. Just this need to um, to be cautious and to ground, to shield. Surrender stress, so take a few deep breaths and exhale. The tension you built up in your body, let the stress go as you come back to your center. So surrender to divine timing. Um, you know, this is about like just getting in to this universal flow and letting things flow with you. It's almost like you're stressing yourself out and you're you're not being completely true to yourself and you're trying to, to force something to happen. It's kind of like you're, you're almost going against yourself. Yeah, so sort of the idea that you can fix someone. I think that's that energy I got where people are kind of, there might be some manipulative people around you right now. And it says it's time for a relationship to shift. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work to try to fix someone. Each person must be accountable for his or her own healing. So if you're trying to fix someone, it's like you... They have to want to change, otherwise it's not going to work, you know what I mean? Like, you have to, you know, consider how hard it is to change yourself and then think about how, you know, impossible it is to change somebody else that doesn't see a fault in their actions and doesn't genuinely want to change their behavior. Um, but, you know, you can send them healing and love from a kind of a detached place where you're keeping yourself safe and you're keeping your boundaries up and you're making sure that you're mentally healthy um while also you know sending them love and good energy um and it says give yourself completely to prayer when you pray from your heart you will be heard throughout the universe and answers and support will arrive so this is a time to kind of go inward and 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 heal and reflect on um i feel like a lot of you have gods and goddesses in your life and um just just connect with whatever realm it is that you connect with but also be safe i feel a strong need to be safe astrally and telepathically right now for a lot of you to ground and shield and be careful with the people in your life surrender to complete healing open fully to the loving compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical emotional and spiritual healing all right now i'm going to draw some tarot cards to see what your person is is feeling or thinking right now all right so for the libra viewers what is your person thinking or feeling? What do you need to know about this connection, this relationship? What is your person thinking? What's going on with this this energy? What is you know, could be an ex, could be a current partner, could be a new partner. What's going on? I sense a strong need to just be gentle with yourself right now. I feel like you've had some really, a lot of ups and downs lately. Um, and I think you just, there's a, just a need to heal is what I feel. Um, where do I want to put these? So you're making a judgment call right now. Okay. 
so your person is kind of focused on finances right now. I think they're not feeling completely stable at the moment, and so it's hard for them to commit fully to this relationship. I think they're kind of trying to make a judgment call about you, or you're trying to make a judgment call about them. It's it's like this, I just sense one or both of you are kind of financially unstable right now. Um, it, it's distracting from the connection and the relationship because there's so much stress right now. Um, let's see. It's kind of like they're trying to like weigh their options. They're trying to make this judgment call. And with the Seven of Pentacles reversed here, you know, Seven of Pentacles upright is hard work and patience and seeing things in the long term and it's like you know you you know you see how she's kind of bleeding for it, it's like the kind of like the black swan almost it's like she's bleeding for everything she's earned she's scratching herself here um there's that dark energy that i mentioned earlier but it's it's it, yeah it's hard work it's patience it's focusing and concentrating on the long term you know putting all this effort into something but with it reversed, it's almost like this person just kind of feels hopeless. They feel like, whether it's like this relationship or finances, I think it's kind of both. It's like they feel like they put all this energy and effort into it, and it's just not going the way that they want it to go. And so there's this this feeling of loss and poverty and anxiety and just not knowing what to do next. And then with the, um, you know, the, the Four of Pentacles here, it's almost like like they're just they're so focused on the material world that they can't see the spiritual connection they have in front of them with you um this is wealth but it's like greed it's like fight like obsessive being obsessive with finances so it's almost like they eventually do get out of this energy of like loss and poverty and like feeling like nothing's going right for them and they they do maybe make a little bit of a comeback here with the Four of Pentacles, but it's like they're kind of alone and isolated. They're kind of like, like, like they're making that, um, shift, but it's, it's, it's almost in a selfish way. It's, it's not, hmm, let's see. Let's see what else we can get here. The Ace of Pentacles, so that's all about having a new beginning. So I do think that there is going to be a new, um, a new kind of shift when it comes to finances. Maybe they, they're hoarding or maybe they're just realizing they're being a little stingy with their finances. And this could also be your energy because sometimes it's sometimes the message comes out how it needs to come out. So that might just be an, an, a message for some of you guys about what to do about your financial situation. It's saying you will come out of it and you're just going to have to be a little bit more careful about your spending. You're going to have to be a little bit more balanced, um, you know, not giving don't give anybody your money either. Like don't loan out money. Don't do any of that. Like keep your money for yourself and be be balanced with your money. And, you know, you're building this new financial um, foundation, I think, and possibly with a person. You're planting these seeds, and it's, it's like you have um, a clearer path ahead coming up after you get through these difficulties. But you kind of have to do things differently this time when it comes to finances, and you have to really change your relationship with money. And, you know, you might have a king of wands that's coming in to... Um, help with that as well. So for those of you, I feel like there's two different stories here. I think for some of you, this is you, your your connection to finances, and you're gonna have a King of Wands that's gonna come in and kind of help. He's gonna teach you a lot of lessons, and he's gonna kind of help you learn to bind to um, balance your finances. And this is someone who's you know they're passionate and they're honorable and they're they're possibly a little hard-headed, possibly, um, what kind of energy is I get? Is that that I'm getting? Like, kind of set in their ways. They can almost be a little egotistical where they just think they know that what the right thing to do is. So you kind of have to be careful what you, what kind of energy you take from them. It's like, it, it needs to be a mutual energy exchange and you kind of have to be careful, um, 
like, because they're just, they're set in their ways. They just feel like they know the right path. And so you have to be careful to only take what resonates with you when you guys are talking. You know what I mean? Don't just let them, they're just, they're very egotistical. Like they think they know what's right. They think they know everything. Um, and they don't, you know what I mean? But they are wise to some degree. Like they do have some things to teach you. They do have, there is some truth to what they say, but there's certain things that are just not for you that will not resonate on your path. And you got to be kind of careful when having conversations with this person so you don't get caught up in that. And so you understand, you know, take what resonates with you and leave the rest out and don't let this person convince you that they, you know, are all knowing and all powerful and they know the absolute truth. There's, there's no absolute truth here. Um, so don't let this king of wands, you know, fool you. This is someone who's passionate and opinionated and stubborn. Um, so again, for some of you, it's like your finances and this, this king of wands is, is coming in. They're going to kind of help you balance out your finances. Um, and for others of you, I think that your king of wands is already in your life and he's having his financial problems and difficulties and he needs a better relationship with money and i kind of sense that he might be i for, for that group i kind of sense almost he might be using you for money or he might be um draining you is kind of i don't know i, I get a, a very gentle like loving almost fragile kind of vibe from the group i'm channeling but you guys are very sweet you're very loving and you're empathetic and you choose to see the best in people but I just see some leeches around you right now that are kind of using that to, they're kind of just manipulating you and using that to their advantage. Um, so there's, yeah, there's some unstable energy there. I'm not going to lie. There's, there's, it's not the best energy. Um, you, you do have to stand up for yourself and, and try to get through that and not let these people take you for granted, not let them take advantage of you, not let them get money from you, whatever it is. Um, what else can I get? Um, I'm trying to think of what to ask. So let's see. Tell me where it's going with this King of Wands. Like, what action are they going to be taking towards you? What action are they going to be taking towards you? Okay, let's see what we got. It's Pentacles, okay. Seven of Swords, Reverse, Six of Wands, Upright. King of Swords, Reversed. Ace of Wands, Upright. Hey. Judgment, Queen of Swords, Chariot, the Eight of Cups reversed. Okay, so here is the story. So this is, so I'm getting two different stories with this, this group. This is the first um, Zodiac reading I've done, you know, in the past couple weeks that I've gotten that for. So the first story, if, if, if this is the one that resonates with you where, you know, your, your um, king of wands is basically financially unstable and it's kind of just distracting him from the relationship. What I'm getting is that this has been a bit of an unstable connection, um, but he does want to build these new foundations uh, financially and also in love. He wants to build new foundations. He had a habit of running away in the past and just saying fuck it and just kind of running and maybe like just not not doing well with finances, not knowing how to balance finances, not knowing how to balance anything in his life, not knowing how to balance work and love and school or whatever else. Um, just not having that good balance and so he used to just kind of run away from things and um, just try to escape and just say screw it and just did not know what to do about his life. Um, I sent someone who's got like a lot of fear and anxiety and somebody who just is very quick to run away. Basically very quick to just say, you know, like screw it, I don't know what to do. But he is trying to build a more solid foundation um, financially and that's going to help him feel more 
more secure in himself and in your relationship because I feel like that financial instability kind of makes him feel a little bit insecure with your connection. And with the Seven of Swords reversed, um, it's like, you know, with the upright, it's like she's running away, she's done. But with it reversed, it's like, no, this person is like trying to not do that anymore. Like they don't want to run away from their problems anymore. They don't want to run away from love, from you anymore. They, um, they really want to face their feelings. Um, but they have these insecurities to work through. With the Six of Wands, it's it's success, it's, it's public recognition, it's this pride and self-confidence and promoting themselves. So this could be them, you know, taking action when it comes to their career. If they're working in like a public field or something that we recognize publicly, or maybe just recognition from you, like just wanting you to be proud of them and see them as, you know, a, a supportive figure and a, and a good figure in your life. Um, you know, they just, they want this recognition and this success and they want this genuine self-confidence and they want to shine. They want their light to shine, but they don't feel like it is. With the, um, with the King of Swords reversed, it's kind of like this mixed energy. It's like where they want that, they want to feel better about themselves, about you, about the, their finances, but there's so much stress that they just don't know how to let go of. And again, this could be you. So this could be what you feel, or it could be what they feel. It's whatever you're resonating with. It's just how the energy comes through. Um, it's whatever spirits that I channel that are here right now that are coming through. So this, this take it how it resonates. You know what I mean? Um, just take it however it resonates. And with the King of Swords reversed and the Queen of Swords upright, it's kind of like he's seeing you as the Queen of Swords. He sees you as, you know, strong and and stable and and sharp and um you just i think this could be him wanting more clear communication with you too which you guys might not be having right now there might be some like silence some lack of communication not hearing from each other um and i think he's wanting some more communication with you but it's like with the queen of swords it's like he sees you as this strong powerful leader type like he sees you as this this stable person um which, you know, if you're more financially stable than he is, that would make sense. But he doesn't see himself as your equal. You know what I mean? Like, you're the Queen of Swords to him, but he's not the King of Swords to you. You see how the, the King of Swords is reversed. So it's like he wants to be in that King of Swords energy, but he doesn't feel like he is. But with the Ace of Wands here, he... He wants, he has that energy and that inspiration to do better. He has, I feel like there might be certain ideas or projects he wants to, maybe like a startup business or something that would cost money to start up, but he doesn't have the confidence in himself to do it. But it's like he wants to, that energy is there, but then there's that insecurity that takes over him where he's like, oh, I can't do that. That's not going to work. That's not going to happen for me. And it gets kind of old for you because you have to keep dealing with that energy. But he's making a judgment call here to try to like balance his life out. And, and what he decides is that he wants to get into this chariot energy and move forward. Um, and that he doesn't, you know, eight of cups reversed. I take it as very similar energy to that other card that we saw, the, um, the seven of swords reversed, where it's like, you know, like upright is kind of like she's, she's tempting him to run away to a new life. It could be like a third party too. Where it's like, oh, it'd be easier with me, or it could be, this could be any kind of third party, so not necessarily a person, it could just be drinking drugs, it could be um, just any kind of escape or defense mechanisms that this masculine has, or this feminine has, whatever it is for you. Um, you know, how, see how seductive she is, she's like, oh, it's easier over here, it's more, it's simpler, you know, come follow me, but it's like, with the, um, with this reversed, he's like, no, I want long term, I don't want something that's just... I don't want a temporary quick fix. I don't want a temporary high. I want to feel good long term. I want a stable long term relationship. I want more than just running away. Like he's in this reading, he's basically saying, you know what? I don't want to run away. I want to come towards you. I want to be financially and um and you know romantically stable. He wants to be stable. He wants to be a better person. But there is just this insecurity that he has. And I'm not gonna lie. I do kind of feel like. I feel abuse for some of you. I really do because I don't like this energy that I feel with him. I mean, I know I get that this masculine is, is probably very insecure and he's probably got a good heart deep down, but I kind of feel like he's financially relying on you guys, so I don't like that energy or he's 
He's almost, I don't, if he's not financially relying on you, I'd feel like he's probably using you as, like, a crutch in some way. It's like, he's so insecure, and he needs to be babied, and it's like, you have such a good heart, you have such a soft heart, you're so vulnerable for people, around people, and it's like, your empathy takes over sometimes, and you don't know how to not let people in, you don't know how to balance that empathy and ground yourself and protect yourself, and there's a really strong emphasis in this reading from your guides that you really need to learn how to be a bitch and say no sometimes. You need to learn to say no to these people sometimes. When people ask you for money, you need to say no to them. Um, you need to learn to not let your empathy get the best of you. You know, keep your empathy. Your empathy is beautiful. It makes you part of who you are, a big part of who you are. You know, you have very beautiful hearts, this group that I'm channeling. You guys are very, very sensitive, very emotionally open from what I can feel. But again, you know, do not let people take that for granted. You have all these, like, little... You know, your, moth, your light is attracting moths kind of thing is what's going on here, I feel. And, and you really need to be more careful and more grounded and more protected. And you need to balance your empathy with logic and with emotion. And just you need to have a good spiritual, intuitive, emotional, logical balance here. And and you need to, to learn to say no to people and really set stronger boundaries and, and not let that empathy get the best of you. You know what I mean? Because eventually you're going to get to a point where you're just going to hate everybody. You're going to get so sick of everyone and you're just going to end up being kind of bitter and cold and angry at the world um, because all these people will have taken you for granted. And, and so you need to nip that in the bud now before you get to that point where you just hate everyone and you don't trust anybody. You, you need to set stronger boundaries. You need to get rid of the leeches finally. You need to cut them out of your life, even if it's hard. And I, I get it. I think that this man is very emotionally dependent on you. I think he's very financially dependent on you, most likely. Um, and I get that it's like you don't want to just let that go. You don't want to just disappoint him and let him go. Maybe you feel like he doesn't have anybody else. But it's like you can't keep doing that to yourself forever either. You know what I mean? Like you're just kind of going in circles and it's like... He's just taking advantage of that empathy. So you really need to be more careful and you need to, you, you, you need to be, you need some strength right now. You need some, yeah, you, you need strength. You really do. You, you need to be strong and you need to do what's right for you, not what's right for them. Do what's right for you. Do what you want to do, not what's right for them. You know, this is your life. It's not their life. It's your life and you need to live it, you know, as best as you can for you. Um, because again, this person is just draining you and they're going to leave you with nothing. They really, I don't see it going well. I feel like this person is so emotionally dependent that it's like, they'll just jump from person to person and use them as their crutch. So once they're done using you, they'll jump to the next person. You know what I mean? Like your love, I hate to say it like that, but your love's not going to, you know, magically fix them if they're this kind of person that's it's not just going to go away you know what i mean like you you got to be honest with yourself now you got to start being honest with yourself about the red flags about you know that your guys are trying to warn you so you you need to listen to that really okay let's get a few quick cards for the other group so for those of you where it's you that's financially unstable and you have this masculine that's coming into your life to help with finances but Mm, that's not such a great energy either, though, because he's kind of controlling. <laughs> I sense, I'm not going to lie, I sense a lot of you are kind of attracted to not the greatest guys, and you really want to work on that. You don't want to, you don't want to live your life like this, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want that forever. So, if, if it's you for fighting, if it's you that's financially unstable, and someone else is, someone's coming in to help with this, but they're going to almost use their finances as a way to control you, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I can't. I can help you financially, but it's like a sugar daddy type energy where it's like, I don't know, I don't like it. I'm not liking it. All right, show me what, what I need to know about this situation where this, this masculine is coming in. The wheel. So a cycle's ending, something new is coming in. Okay, we've got very similar energy here in the world. Okay, I don't mean to read all these upside down. I think I just need to, I don't think those are meant to be buried upside down. I think I just need to um, reshuffle my deck. <laughs> That's what's going on there. Oh, crap. Stay up, stay up, stay up. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't even know if this was meant to be a like. I'm mean, usually I don't even leave it, but like all of them were like up like upside down, and I don't. I think it's just my deck, so intuitively I don't feel like I should read. If I felt it, I would go with it, but I don't feel like that was meant to be read that way. So, with the wheel, you're kind of ending. It's like you're ending a new cycle, and, and something's beginning again, and it's like you have this new start and this great potential and this enthusiasm, and you might be getting a message relating to, you know, passion or career advancement. This could be a promotion. There might be just this message coming in, and, you know, with the world, it's like you're you're in this this phase where you're celebrating and you're happy about it, and it, it all seems, it seems like it's going well, and you have this Eight of Cups, so it's kind of like you're leaving your old life behind you're escaping you want something new um and that could be where this person comes in too where it's like they are that that new thing for you that new um energy that's coming in and they might come in it might be like a boss or a coworker or something that someone that comes in offering you this financial sta stabil uh, stability and with the page of pentacles see that's there might be another message coming in related to, um, you know, your dreams, your goals, you know, your actions. It's like you're manifesting this and there's this message coming in that's probably related to, to work, career, to finances, to um, to your passions. Um, then with the nine of wands, it's kind of like a, God, what is it? How do I explain that energy? With the Nine of Wands, it's like you have to be strong and you have to be confident and, and have faith in yourself. And there's obstacles, but you're going to be successful in the end. That's why I almost wonder if this is a sugar daddy energy because I see this as either a sugar daddy or just somebody that you're not fully happy with because like the King of Swords here, I almost feel like you feel kind of alone with this person. It's like they're very logical. They're very sharp. They're very... They're wise to some degree, but they have a big ego, and they think they're right about everything. Um, and so they're just kind of strict and set in their ways um, a, a lot of the time, I feel. And with the Ten of Pentacles, it's like you get what you want. Like, you get the financial stability and the success. Like, they do financially support you. But, like, you feel alone. Like, I see her kind of like she's, like, sleeping. She's dreaming. This Ace of Cups, it's like she's lost her romantic side, like her softer side, her empathy, her love. It's like she feels like she can only be that way in her dreams. She can only be that way by herself. She cannot express that with this strict, harsh king of swords. Like he doesn't understand that. He doesn't respect empathy. He doesn't respect love. He doesn't respect those energies. He's too logical for her. Um, It's not someone that I think you would want to date. I mean, if you're just trying to get a financially and this is a sugar daddy then just you know see it as that's what it is you know what I mean it's not gonna you're not gonna want a deep connection with this person I'm feeling um at least with the energy I'm picking up unless you meet somebody new that has a very because your guides might actually just bring you if you're praying and you're trying to manifest like a financially stable partner maybe your guides will actually bring you a financially stable partner that will be able to meet your emotional um, and sexual and, and passionate needs as, as well as your financial needs. But with this particular masculine, these particular masculines I channeled, I just got that he's strict, he's kind of boring and dull and egotistical and stuck in his ways and hard-headed. And so no, on an emotional level, he's not going to make you happy. He's not going to meet you there. You're a very deep person and he's just not it for you but um you know if you keep manifesting you you might manifest someone who is you might manifest a partner who is actually financially stable and emotionally available in a way that this masculine is not so um really quick i guess what do for this king of swords what do you guys need to know about this king of swords what do you guys want to know about him There's an understanding, you know, I think that part of you knows that it's not going to go anywhere and it's a complicated situation. So again, I might be channeling someone who's who's in a sugar daddy situation. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe you're maybe he's so financially stable that you're hoping that the emotional connection 
yeah, you're wishing here. You're like wishing you want forward movement. You're hoping this is your knight in shining armor coming in on a white horse. Um, but it's like, he's not. <laughs> I mean, this one isn't, you know, this particular masculine. Yeah, I got love upside down. It's like the love, the emotional fulfillment, the connection, the empathy, the closeness is not there. I kind of get a sense that like, you guys have different romance languages as well. So it's like you, like he doesn't really, like I had an ex once, and this is what this reminds me of. I had a military ex once. And I wanted to stay in bed and cuddle all day and be all vulnerable and romantic and cute and lovey. And he hated that. He, when he wanted to be romantic, he would buy me stuff. He would take me out to dinner. He would um, buy me shoes or clothes or whatever and take and spend money on me. And I didn't give a shit about it. I was like, I don't want the jewelry. Or I don't want the, the, you know, the fancy dinners or whatever. It's nice. It's a nice gesture. But I'm like, that does not compensate for an emotional connection that does not compensate for you being willing to be vulnerable with me like my room we had two very different romance languages and we did not work out very well and so for some of you i feel like it could be that kind of energy here where it's like when they're trying to be romantic they're going to try to take you out to dinner or buy you stuff and buy you off and you're just like no that's not going to compensate for the lack of romance you know what i mean and there's a lack of honesty here too you guys aren't being honest and you might not be honest with yourself about this kind of connection, like what it really is, you know. Maybe it's like you're fragmented. It's like you're not feeling like your whole self with this connection. You don't feel fully stable. And it's like you you took a risk here and the risk is not paying off so much, I feel. Um, and you want to get back to your individuality. You want to get back to just being you, to doing you, to... You know, you don't want to lose... This man is controlling. He likes to control people through finances so it's not good it's it's he you he doesn't get that he can't control you with finances he doesn't get that he can't buy you off so and again maybe for some of you a couple of you this might actually be a sugar daddy situation so you might already know sorry you might already know what it is you might already get that that's that energy that you're picking up um and and for others it's like you kind of don't know it's like you're seeing that the emotional connection is not there, but he's financially stable, and so you're hoping it gets there, but it's just not. Um, and, and again, I don't want you guys to lose hope because I do think that you are manifesting love. Um, I think my advice to you is just, you know, what I was saying earlier in this video is that you have very strong, beautiful hearts. You, you do. You're very empathetic, but it... it um, you end up in these controlling, one-sided, toxic relationships, and you really need to work on that. You really need to work on your self-confidence, you know, genuine self-confidence, doing things for you. I feel like you put everybody above yourself, and you need to put yourself first for a change. You need to pursue your hobbies that make you happy. You need to pursue your career. You know, this masculine might try to control your career. Like, no, pursue the career that you want to pursue, even if it's weird or out there. Do what you want to do. Do the career that resonates for you, the hobbies that resonate for you. Even if they're strange or different or whatever, don't let him talk shit about them. Just do them for you. You know what I mean? Like, do what makes you happy and put yourself first and, and you know, heal. And you really need to develop some strength and some, and some boundaries, some serious boundaries. You need to... To stop being so hard on yourself and, and be okay being a bitch when you need to be. You know, sometimes you have to, when leeches are around you, you have to say no sometimes. You have to put people in their place sometimes. Um, so remember that because otherwise your empathy will get the best of you and you will just end up drained and you will end up bitter and alone and hating the world. Um, and you don't want to let it get there. You know what I mean? Like, you you don't want to let people just drain you until there's nothing left to drain. You want to protect your energy now. You Time is of the essence. You need to do this now. You need to protect yourself now from these people around you. Um, and again, this situation, it's, it's either a sugar daddy situation or it's... Um, an insecure masculine because I picked up a few different energies so it, it's it, there's two couple different stories is what I feel so there's there's that there's also an insecure masculine that's kind of just leeching on you and you definitely want to nip both the energies I got the two different men that I picked up or two different scenarios that I picked up for this group for these groups um you know they're they're the, both of the men were not good one of them was just kind of using you for for money and they're they're probably a sociopath and going to be on to the next best thing as soon as they're done draining you. Um, and then the second group was, you know, a man that 
basically thinks that he can control you with money. He's the financially stable one and you're the financially unstable one and he thinks that he can buy you and control you with money. And he's gonna try to control you more and more as time goes on. So you need to be warned about that. Um, but again, I don't want you guys to lose hope. You just, you really have to do some work when it comes to setting boundaries and being strong and being true to yourself and putting your needs first finally and um, and not letting your empathy get the best of you. You know what I mean? You really need to protect and preserve that empathy more and just, just be more mindful and um, and cut the leeches out and, and keep them out and, and be willing to say no to people and be willing to do whatever you need to do for yourself to make yourself happy, to be where you want to be in life. Stop listening to outside opinions. Stop listening to rumors and gossip and people and society's opinions and all that bullshit. Start listening to yourself and your heart and your intuition. Um, start really listening to your intuition. And, you know, toxic people always say follow your heart. Like, and, and, and you should follow your heart. And I think that toxic relationships are in the mind. They're not in the heart. You know what I mean? A lot of times, a lot of times people will get in these abusive relationships and they're like, oh, I'm following my heart. I'm being with this person. And it's like, you're not following your heart though. You're following your mind. You're following your subconscious patterns and your routines and the familiarity and childhood patterns and, you know, being used to abuse and being used to put down, being put down and being used to having to be quiet, like having to be having to put your needs last and having this self-sacrifice. Like you might have soul, soul, soul contracts of self-sacrifice that you guys need to nip in the bud and cut those soul contracts out. And it's it's like you weren't following your heart in these abusive relationships. You were following your mind. You were following your old subconscious toxic patterns. Following your heart is like soul-based. It's like a soul connection. It's a deeper connection. It's not familiarity. It's it's new. It's different. It's it's gonna feel different. It's gonna feel different in your body, in your heart, in your mind, your soul. You just gotta tune into that intuition more, and you gotta trust that intuition and and build a solid foundation for your intuition and and don't let people talk you out of your feelings or convince you you don't feel a certain way. You know what I mean? Or convince you of this or that. Like you you gotta be. You got to rise above that. You know what I mean? You have to just be true to yourself and just really rise above that energy. Um, uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. So I did I did want to say, you know, don't give up hope on love, though, because I do feel like you guys will have love. But I feel like it's a journey. I feel like it's a process because if you if you do not learn to balance, if you do not learn to say no to people and start being true to yourself, you will continue to attract the wrong people and you will continue to be attracted to the wrong people. You've, you know, I would never let a man borrow money at this point in my life. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it because I've been, I've done that before. I have let men borrow money from me before in the past. Um, it's been a long time though, but it's like, I've gotten to a point where I will not allow that. So you want to get yourself to that point where that's like a big red flag for you or where being hit is a big red flag for you or being abused in any way is a big red flag for you and just like a no like where you're, you're done like you where you're have these like standards that if someone breaks that you're done with them you know what I mean um because there's just certain lines that a man should not cross in this these men that I'm picking up in this reading they're crossing those lines with you guys for sure and, and so yeah your, your light is attracting moths it's attracting these these leechy type men and um, when once you once you find yourself and you find that balance and you stay true to yourself above all else, that is when you're going to draw in the right man because he's going to see you for who you are. He's not gonna he's not gonna be one of these narcissists or narcissists or sociopaths that just preys off your empathy. He's gonna actually like he's gonna see your empathy, but he's gonna see your boundaries and your confidence, and he's gonna get that even though you're amazing and you're empathetic and you're loving, that you're not gonna tolerate that shit. You know what I mean? like like he's not going to use you you know what i mean like you will draw in the right man after you get to that that point where um where where you're not allowing this toxic energy in anymore and you're and it, you're vibrating at like a different level where you're um you just you have to stop allowing this with men or, or with women um, you just, I don't know what else to say about it. You just, you got to stop allowing this. And then you're going to start, as you develop like genuine confidence, you're going to start um, like noticing people that are different than your usual type. Um, you're going to start being attracted to people that you wouldn't normally be attracted to. You're going to start being attracted to not to people that need to be fixed or need to be babied and mothered and saved. You're going to start being attracted to like people who already have their shit together or are getting their shit together and would even if they don't have their shit together they would never in a million years dream of asking you for money or 
leeching on you in any way. They will, they'll figure it out on their own. You know what I mean? Like a real genuine person will be like, no, I'm not gonna, they, they won't, they won't like just train you like that. You know what I mean? So, um, also really just, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, you, you will draw in the right partner when you get to that, that space. Um, and I hate telling people like that because I'm not, I'm not one of these like love and light high lives only readers. Like I hate that shit. I do not do that because I think that we're all human and we, um, we all have our different paths and, and, you know, the, we can't have light without darkness, you know, like you gotta, you gotta merge the dark and the light, you know what I mean? Um, And it's, it's normal to feel vulnerable and to cry and to just be dark sometimes and go through your shadow phases and go through these dark periods. And everyone deserves love. Like, it's loneliness is so painful. And, like, we all deserve love no matter where we're at in our lives. So so don't ever let anyone feel, make you feel like you don't deserve love. Um, I don't want to ever come across that way. I'm just, I'm just saying that you're just I, – I see this group and I see the kind of men that you're attracting. And I wish that there was an easy solution for it. But I, I don't know what else to say other than just to – you, you've, you've got to work on that so that you attract better men. Um, anyway, please like, comment, share, subscribe if this resonates. It really helps me um, when you guys comment and like because then these videos pop up on people's YouTubes more and I get more followers and um, it just helps me get out there on YouTube. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. And it's always good to hear from you guys. I like um, you know hearing your stories and talking to you and engaging with you. Um, thank you guys.